a few comments which are essentially preaching to the choir, but I think I need to make them at the beginning about how important this is. And then I'm going to actually essentially think aloud about some of the issues I'm uh, concerned about uh, in surgical research, because I think that there are several areas where I really need help and uh, we can sense we need uh, to work together. So let's start off with the really obvious points. Innovation in surgery, as in the rest of uh, medical professions, is absolutely essential. And if you look back at the stunning improvement in surgical and medical mor morbidity and mortality since the NHS started <coughs> 70 years ago this year, uh, it has all been based on innovation. So innovation itself is a good thing. But uh, what we all know is that most good ideas put together by uh, sensible and intelligent people who all agree with one another do not work, or do not work anywhere near as well as they think they're going to work, and sometimes they do active harm. We've got to remember, and it's useful to look at history, we are in a profession uh, which for uh, many generations, for example, uh, sincerely believed that leeches were good for you. Uh, in my trade as a medic, or that cutting people for blood was good for them, uh, your trade as surgeons. Uh, Clearly, we look back on that and think, how could they? I think we can all be very confident people will look back on some of the things that we do now that we all agree on and will say, how could they believe that was going to work? It was clearly stupid. So I think we have to accept that at any given time, quite a lot of what we do is not working in the way we expect. And if you don't test it, you simply will not know. Third uh, obvious point, surgical research, uh, as Jane said, has come a huge distance in the UK and elsewhere, but particularly in the UK. And uh, the way it's being done, I think many other disciplines could learn a lot from. Uh, for example, the collaborative uh, groups of trainees, uh, which surgeons and the anaesthetists do, no one else does. They're just absolutely fantastic, and they've led uh, to a revolution. And I suspect none of us would have predicted that, uh, those of us who are slightly older when we were at medical school. And NIHR, uh, which I head up, although it's only obviously one of my roles, uh, very much supports this and will continue to support this. Uh, and I think the real question is, what can we do that will help improve things? Two final points just on the my kind of making the, stating the obvious. The first is that, in my view, anything that has not been tested is an innovation. So there's lots of things we do in our back catalogue in both surgery and medicine which are, although they are completely standard practice, no one questions them, they've been handed down uh, from person to person over several generations. Actually, they are still an innovation because we have no idea whether they work. Uh, and it is quite impressive how many of those ideas, when you finally do come to test them, prove not to work in the way uh, you expect. So there's a very large back catalogue of what we all do in all areas of medicine and surgery, uh, which does need testing. But I think in this conference, we're particularly thinking about new innovations and how we should be taking them systematically from the first gleam in the eye over a drink in the bar or whatever it is that actually first gives you a gleam in the eye uh, all the way through to uh, a change in practice that we're all comfortable with. The second is that uh, the, first of the final uh, one of the, sort of the more general points, again, which I hope everyone would agree with, is that it is as important and arguably in many ways more important to do these studies that demonstrate things do not work as to do the, the studies which demonstrate that things do. I'll give a few recent examples. Uh, for example, nice study demonstrating that operations for people with frozen shoulder, not a good idea. Excellent large studies showing that many people with uh, prostate cancer need neither surgery nor radiotherapy. Just watching them is absolutely fine. If I had prostate cancer, when I get prostate cancer, if I don't die very soon, because we all get it eventually for men, obviously uh, women here won't, uh, I'm very pleased to know the fact that actually someone's done that research. Um, uh, and the third one is uh, multiple studies of robots. Uh, wh what we know from all the social science is that patients love robots, surgeons love robots, and manufacturers love robots. But actually, with the trials of robots, are in almost invariably disappointing, uh, ranging from uh, help a little to don't help at all. Uh, and you know, here's, an, here's an example of a technology which is, for which there's enormous enthusiasm, but actually the evidence base has still to go. It doesn't mean that the robots won't develop, obviously. So now moving on to the points which I kind of want, I, I want to just in a sense do a stream of consciousness on. The first of which is within every area of medicine and surgery, there are cultural and tribal reasons why some areas do a lot of research and take evidence seriously and others do not. And they are largely random. 
So you will find a particular discipline that does a lot of research, and next door to it, a discipline where research is just as important and just as easy could use roughly the same methodology that does not do it. Uh, you know, I could compare, for example, in my trade, uh, cardiology with uh, care of the elderly, geriatrics. Geriatric research, absolutely essential. There's much less of it. In surgery, the same is true. But these are not fixed. So if you, for example, look at orthopedic surgery, you know, surgical research really did not happen in orthopedic surgery for very long periods of time. Now, it's one of the areas of surgery which has really moved on. So these are not written in stone, and when we see them, we should challenge them. And the same is true geographically. It is a bit disappointing to me, uh, as a uh, UK person, that actually your chance of being involved in surgical research, as in all other kinds of medical research, is very heavily determined by do you live near to a university uh, medical school. That shouldn't be happening. It's not that the best centers should not be developing the research, but they then should be going to where the patient burden is greatest and doing their research there. It makes scientific sense, it makes moral sense, I have to say it makes political sense. It's the right thing to do, and yet I think we're very parochial in the way we think about it. So both in, we should challenge both on geography and on discipline where we see uh, cold spots. Second thing is, uh, and this conference is very much around this, is it's very important to avoid theology uh, in the decision about what makes good evidence. Uh, and there are many, many theologians out there. Uh, the randomistas are a big group. I've done lots of randomized trials, nothing against them, but there are many areas where randomized trials are not the right answer, either because it's the wrong stage of development or simply because it's not the right methodology for this point in time. Uh, but there are probably theologians for the ideal uh, framework as well. We just need to avoid theology and be pragmatic in the way we do it. My own uh, test of whether research is good is if I don't like the answer, will it change my mind? And if the answer is yes, irrespective of the methodology, is probably good research. If, all, if the only research we're going to believe is the research that conforms, conforms to our own priors, uh, then I think we are doomed uh, to fail, merely to re-entrench bad practice. Um, when I look at surgery as an outsider, because I'm a physician, and I feel I'm slightly going into the lion's den here, uh, I, I per, in all areas, I think of a spectrum from kind of pharmacology research, where it maybe takes 15 years to get a, something into practice, where the innovation can take literally a full, a full uh, working career sometimes to get something through. And then the other end, work I used to do a lot of with humanitarian disasters, where you have m hundreds of people innovating every single occasion, never capture the lessons, and every single innovation has to be relearned the next time the same thing happens. Surgery, I would say, is obviously between those two spe spectrums, but on the whole, tends to be much closer to the second than the first. Lots of innovation, much less ca formal capture of what we've been doing. And I think this is an area uh, we really do need uh, to up our game as a profession. <coughs> when we're looking at forward uh, research, uh, we clearly need to think uh, very seriously about the trends in all of the areas we're in. The easiest thing as a funder and the easiest thing as a researcher are to do a bit more in the areas that are already going well in research terms. And the really key thing is to spot the areas where a, a, a field, a discipline, a procedure has gone nowhere, and yet it is clearly suboptimal. Uh, there are, of course, um, some obvious trends in surgery, the move to minimally invasive surgery. You can see from the moon, the average reader of any newspaper would know about that. Uh, slight more for the broadsheet newspapers, uh, the move uh, from surgery to radiologically driven procedures coiling, uh, the big move, for example, from cardiac surgery to angioplasty for a number of things. Uh, but of course, there are some very major uh, forward movements which are only really known to our profession. Uh, these include a much greater emphasis, and I think we're going to see a lot more of this, on much earlier diagnosis of solid tumors, which I think means there's a real opportunity to have surgical definitive treatment and ideally remove the drug and radiology end completely uh, if you can get there early enough. I think this is something we really should make a big push on. Clearly, the increasing age needs to be looked at very seriously. An evidence base that was based on people aged 40 to 60 may no longer be relevant once the median, median age for people is 70 to 85, which increasingly it will be. And multimorbidity is just as much of a problem for surgery as it is for the rest of medicine, but I see very little research Looking at that, this is the future trend. We need to think about it uh, very seriously. But above all, we need to look at what's not going well. Finally, I'd just like to make a point about what government can do. I represent government both as a funder and uh, in other areas and uh, in um, uh, what, what everyone else can do. The two things the government can do are provide money 
public money, but of course there's a lot of money from charities, from industry and elsewhere, and help with regulation. And of course government on the second of those can sometimes be part of the problem rather than part of the solution. And my concern, this is my final point, is that when I look at research as opposed to practice, in, in practice of medicine, surgeons are very heavily represented in advising ministers. In fact, statistically, if you did a chi-squared test, overrepresented. Uh, when I was working with Jeremy Hunt, I would go into a meeting and usually I was the only non-surgeon present among the medical staff. The same is not true when it comes to research. So if you look at the, the boards of NIHR, Wellcome, MRC and others, surgeons are rare and difficult to find and usually slightly abnormal as surgeons. Uh, and it would therefore be really quite sensible, I think, to try and redress that because sur the surgical you know, uh, disciplines require a series of slightly different approaches and people outside the disciplines simply will not spot that. They can spot the big stuff, but they can't spot the subtleties and often the barriers lie on the subtleties. So I would encourage you to get involved and I would really welcome more surgeons in the advisory systems in the areas I look at and in the others. That, those are the points I want to make. Happy to take any brief questions.